Hi, Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone here. You're listening to MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone. Hey, everybody. I'm Jess. Did I just stumble over Veronica Ciccone? Yes, you did. Hey, guys, it's Tony, and uh, we have six more weeks of winter left, according to the Groundhog. Oh, thank Jesus, because I, I'm telling you, I am having a pandemic winter blues these mm. days. I know. Hey, everybody, it's Stefan. Welcome to another episode of MLVC, the Madonna podcast. As you heard, we have our friend of the podcast, Jeff Rothschild, back with us for hey, a little chat. Hi, Jess. Hi, boys. I'm Hi, so Jess. excited to be back. I love you guys so much. Well, we love you, oh, and we love your thanks. podcast, Hot Takes and Deep Dives. I listen to it every week. You are killing it with the guests. Oh, my God. They're so good. Thank you. I know. Oh. I'm so jealous you got to talk to recently Jackie Tone from Glow. So, okay, Jackie Tone, we... Tone, so this yeah, is sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's Tone. So here's what's... Do you know who Jackie Tone is, mm-hmm. Tony? Yes. Yes, I'm okay. Glow. So I went, we went to high school together here on, the, on Long Island, and, but we weren't friends. She was two years older than I am, and so we weren't really in classes together, but I certainly knew who she was because when we were in junior high, she was cast on The Nanny. She had a couple uh, episodes. Mm. She played a young Fran Drescher. Oh, on the funny. nanny, and she was like on an episode of Sopranos, like season one before. So it was she was anything. like everyone knew who she was walking down the hallways. Yes, she was like the one on TV. She was like <laughs> the one who became a successful like actress, like from our from our school. And so I, you know, I reached out to her over email. Like she doesn't know who I am, you know, because mm-hmm. we weren't friends. And I wait. She said yes right away to the podcast, and I knew I would reveal. So literally in the first like. 20 seconds of the interview. Oh my God. I let her know on air that we went to high school until you get her authentic reaction. She's like, yeah, I knew cute. that I knew you. Like it, it was really funny. I'm really sad that Glow's not coming back. I know. I know. They have to do like a farewell movie or something. Like well, I get it. Alison Bree says it ain't happening. I heard her. <gasps> Did she say that? Yeah. Oh. In an interview, she's like, I don't think it's going to happen, guys. Jackie said in the interview that they even filmed. So basically they started filming. They were renewed for a fourth and final season and they started filming in March of 2020. They, bum, in bum, fact, bum. they filmed two and a half episodes and they just uh-huh. Netflix decided to scrap the whole thing. Yeah. I'd heard that it was because like, because of the pandemic and the close contact that all of the actresses have with each other, that they were like, it's not worth the risk. And it yeah. just, yeah, I know it was sad. I cause I love that show, but in case you're oh. just tuning in, this is G L O W the globe. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, well, okay. Yeah. So we have Jess here cause we're just doing um, a, a little chat about our girl, Madonna. And as always, we thought it'd be fun to have a little bit of, this week in Chicago. See, I get what I want. I think the, the biggest thing that she's been up to recently is she's still editing the Madame X DVD. I don't mm. quite know why it's taking so long, but the one <laughs> special thing that I thought we got recently was she teased some footage of Tears of a Clown, and I was wondering if that maybe meant she's giving us a double feature. What do you guys think? Will we get Madame X and Tears of a Clown? I mean, I feel like Tears of a Clown was released in some iteration, but it wasn't... It's on on YouTube, because I have watched the whole thing. But it's not Um, great quality. I think that if she can, you know, give it the Jonas Ockerlund treatment, it might be watchable, right? I do find it funny that you keep referring to it as the Madame X DVD. <laughs> this is going to be a streaming thing, right? It's going to be on Netflix or whatever. Yeah, HBO but Max. she will put it up for sale eventually. I mean, it'll yeah. right. Eventually, we'll probably get like a, yeah, Showtime, HBO Max, Netflix, some sort of streaming yeah. platform. But then the I, inevitable I, I, deal with Target to do a physical release. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's where I bought the last, I mean, since uh, Sticky and Sweet, I've bought all my physical Madonna DVDs from Target. So You'll get I'm, the little, it'll be a Target bonus pack. You'll get the DVD with an eye patch and a grill. And then you can do up your Madame X, you know, just yeah. in time for Halloween. I do think <laughs> that 
The Madonna fans who would have loved to go see the Madame X tour, but couldn't because either they had kids and they can't st- go to a show that's going to end at 3 a.m. Or the show got canceled that they bought tickets for. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I do think that there is an audience for this. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of people who didn't get a chance to see it. And yeah. and I love every time she posts about it on her social in all of the comments, all you see is fans pleading that she doesn't overproduce the performance, that there's not mm-hmm. like tons of quick cuts and tons of like overlays and, and filters. And they, people are just, they want to see Madonna perform. And I agree. I think that it, it's a perfect, did you see the David Byrne, on HBO, the yeah. special that he did of yes. his the, American Utopia. It's great. Yes, yeah. that's how I want the Madame X DVD. I just want clean, precise. Like, just sh- I want to see the show. Just point the camera, and that's it. Like, you yeah. don't have to do anything. Uh, yeah. Why is it taking so long? That is very weird. I don't know. I it think sh- it, I mean, it should have been out like a year ago. Yeah, I mean, usually it's six months after the last performance of that tour. I guess COVID, that's why. Yeah, but and, and you know, from, because she's involved, she's getting involved. That's I mean. what I was. About to, that's what I was going to say. It looks like she's doing it herself. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I'm. I will. So the fact that she's taking this long to edit the Madame X DVD, all I can think of is I'm like, what does this mean for her movie? You know, like how how long is her, her the edit for her movie going to take? I mean, obviously she's got a tight turnaround on that because mm-hmm. they're they're definitely going to be filming this year at some point, depending on I, I'm assuming like when they can confirm the actress and get the scheduling all worked out. But it'll obviously be summer, fall this time in New York. And then she's got to mm-hmm. make sure that that film gets edited in time for her to release that movie next year for award season because she'll want to make sure that that movie's eligible for award season. And then she'll be, you know, like doing the rounds at the Golden Globes and the Oscars. And hopefully she's getting some, some editing practice now on the the DVD. And then she'll be (laughs) ready to go for the, the Madonna biopic. So, um, you know, there was like a rumor that came out in like late December that there was going to be, a Madonna performance at the Super Bowl with the weekend. And, you know, we are all longtime Madonna fans and we can all take this with a grain of salt. I mean, obviously this wasn't going to happen because that rumor lived for two days in December and then there was no follow-up, right? I saw it all over the internet. So uh, maybe I was the one spreading it all over the internet. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yes, I had seen a rumor saying that sh- her and The weekend were going to team up and they were going to do, she was going to release an EP and the first single was going to be the duet with her and The weekend, and that she was going to then make a surprise performance at the Super Bowl. Sadly, that is not happening. That would have been amazing. Yeah, it would have been amazing. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah. yeah. Whoever was smoking opium that came up with that was <laughs> onto something. But I mean, I guess somebody should have told Madonna and The Weeknd, and they maybe would have come up with something. I mean, I, I figured out that this wasn't happening when The Weeknd announced the track listing for his greatest hits album coming out on Friday, and there's no new tracks, you know. So yeah. his new song is really good. Oh like, yeah, the lead single yeah. off of it is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I love his vibe. I love his music. I think sadly it's a missed opportunity because Madonna would have. What do we think about the choice of the weekend as a Super Bowl halftime show? Uh, I think no one else wants to do it. That's what I think. <laughs> I love the weekend, and I remember I had seen him at the Global Citizens Festival, and oh wow, what's everyone he like knew- live. He was amazing. Like his stage yeah. performance and his production value was phenomenal, and everyone knew the songs. And I was like, wow, I didn't quite realize he was had gone to the upper echelon quite the way that he has. But, Mm -hmm. uh, so I assume he's going to put on a pretty good show, but, um, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's not like not a stage show. Like we, like Janet Jackson, like JLo, I need a performance. Yeah. He, well, what I was thinking is maybe he'll do some, like, he'll do a cover of like a Michael Jackson song and like bring the house down, you know, because like, Everyone, I think everyone was saying that like the only way that like people would find it acceptable to listen to Michael Jackson music ever again is if the weekend re-recorded his entire catalog and then they'd be like, then they'll enjoy Michael Jackson music again. 
He has a cover of a Michael Jackson song. It's he, is it is it either like Dirty Diana or I don't know. It's like on one of his first albums he does he I think it's Dirty Diana, but it's listed as DD on oh. I am 90% sure. I have to look at well, that. But yeah, and it's, amazing, imagine, and it's like, amazing. Imagine if he did, you know, like want to be starting something or, mm-hmm. you know, like totally. just some sort of anthemic big party Michael Jackson song that like early Michael Jackson that like he could like, he, I mean, because he's got the vocal range for it and it would be yeah. such a fun way, like a fun tribute and, um, and party. Yeah, because I don't think a lot of his songs are kind of party. <laughs> no. Wait, you want to hear the funniest thing? Yeah. Election election weekend so like we knew it was that weekend there was that all that energy in new york because like we knew that mm-hmm. biden was pretty much going to secure it like that saturday or sunday when that we were friday, praying <laughs> yes yeah. that friday or saturday night i was having dinner outside outdoor dining at cafe clooney in the west village mm-hmm. and who rides by on their bicycle down whatever street that is west fourth street the weekend oh like like manual bicycle or like motorcycle bicycle oh, like a city bike <laughs> yeah but it was like yeah yes like a city bike it was a weekend bike <laughs> can you believe that <laughs> that's so cool i recognized his hair i was like that's the weekend was, oh so he wasn't wearing a helmet no no it was like crazy <gasps> hair no Stefan, i know you're worried about the weekend safety especially <laughs> <No>. <laughs> photographed with bruises on his face lately but yeah, well, like, what you guys are saying about like, you know, how he doesn't really have anything that's too up tempo. I mean, I'm thinking that will lend the show to have that Daft Punk, you know, uh, electronica vibe. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but does that work for the Super Bowl? Who knows? When Madonna did her Super Bowl halftime show, what was it, 2012? Yeah, 2012. Yes. What was your initial reaction? Like watching it live and immediately after, what was your gut response to it? Okay, I have a story. May I tell it? Yes, <laughs> please. please. So I was working at Film Society at Lincoln Center and I had to work the weekend because we had a uh, film festival. Double going feature? On. No, no, we had a, you know, we had a film festival. So I had to like be there, you know, because the, the real people were off, you know? We, me and my friend Mary were like, you know, Madonna's going to be on the Super Bowl and we're going to be here because there's going to be a screening. And we're like, oh, what are we going to do? So we talked to one of the projectionists and he set up a rig in this like little gallery that we had in the Walter Reed Theater. And he set up a projector and we watched Madonna's Super Bowl performance on this projected screen. And of course, you know, I started crying the minute she came out as <laughs> Cleopatra. You know, I was like, this is amazing. Ah. Um, you know, I gasped when she almost fell, you know, and, um, I just cheered through the whole time. I mean, cause it was like, you know, I, I was looking around, like, I thought everybody hated Madonna. And at that moment it was like, we all loved her again, you know? Mm-hmm. Jess, where were you when you <laughs> saw Madonna at the Super Bowl? I was in my friend's apartment, a bunch of us at every year, uh, pretty much like year after year, we always gather for the Super Bowl. And we watch the halftime show and I was, you know, I'm the biggest Madonna fan among my friend, my friend group. And so I was just like glued to the TV and I, I loved it Mm -hmm. at the time. I loved it. I I mean, like just the Imperial look, you know what I didn't love? Okay. So I'm going to go on record right here, right here. Tell us how you feel, Jess Rothschild. This this is like my hot, my hot take is MDNA (laughs) is Mm -hmm. horrible Mm -hmm. and the fact that she had what was that lead single with the pom poms and all that? Give me all your love. Give me, give me all your love. Okay, throw it in the trash. And I didn't like that. The, the that unfortunately for me, this is a me thing. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, that was like the front and center current moment. And so, like that's that's a, just a throwaway album, throwaway single for me. So I don't like that it now forever is going to live in posterity like this mm-hmm. ladies you know? and gentlemen thoughts and opinions of our guests do not reflect <laughs> the opinions noted by your hosts of this podcast do you, Just- you do you strongly disagree <laughs> remember that we got a leak of that single uh early in december and it was terrible. It was the one that just said L-U-V Madonna, you know, and it, I don't know, it was really like underproduced. So I was like not happy about that. And then when the song came out, I was like, this is a plant. We're being set up here. This song Madonna probably doesn't even like it, but she had to do something that was of the moment so it could get put on TV so she could sell tickets to people that aren't her fans the next day. I mean, that's how I looked at it. And 
I mean, I like the video, but I, I can't say that I've ever put that song on a Madonna playlist, and I can't say that I've ever listened to it since 2012. To me, Give Me All Your Lovin' was sort of like a teaser track to the album, which to me did not really set up MDNA, the era, mm -hmm. very successfully because tonally, the, you know, when she released Girl Gone Wild, I was like, and now we've begun the MDNA right. era. Because, but if you think yeah. about it, you know, Guy Osiri and her management team, they were probably like, Madonna, you cannot go out there and do Girl Gone Wild as your Super Bowl performance track for this album, people will, you know, like it was the Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake problem, you know, like they had to make sure that it was family friendly. And so she was probably like, let me do something sweet and fun and bouncy. And that's why we got that. Now, all that to say, I happen to love the give me all your love and video. Give me all your love and oddly enough is my ringtone. I don't know why it just is. Uh, <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> it's a, to me, it's a super little sweet ditty and it's, I love the video. It's stylistically. I think the video was so fun and different for her. And, mm -hmm. but I, I like what you said. I don't think it hit the right note. It to me is if you look at her entire Super Bowl performance, that 12 minutes of heaven, the, Give Me All Your Love is probably the weakest moment of that performance. Well, you know, I, I agree with Jess, though. I mean, MDNA is kind of like, wow. I mean, there's a couple of standout singles that I personally love. But other than that, I think that album needs a reboot, right? I think... So Ladies and gentlemen, of opinions Bowl. of our co-host on this podcast <laughs> do not reflect the opinions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What I, what I think is interesting, um, in her Howard Stern interview, she talked about how nervous she was about doing the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an interesting moment in that interview like, where he, you know, he gets her to talk about it. And it's interesting that she would still be so nervous. You know, she's performed on every stage. Like, mm -hmm. why... I almost feel like she'd be like, oh, but it's it's interesting that she still. I feel because it's an audience that she has yet to conquer. And I think mm -hmm. she did that night because, you know, people that didn't think of her before yeah. were talking. Of course, they're coming out of the woodwork to talk to me about it. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy that you watched the Super Bowl. Thanks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember I was nervous for her. I was. Yeah. And what was it? I don't know what it is about Super Bowl weekend in 2012. I was at a conference in Miami that I was running and we had literally like landed that Sunday and we like had to, you know, meet with the catering people and the conference room people. And I was like, I was telling everybody, I'm like, I, okay. I'm like, I have to be in front of a television at, to watch Madonna on the Super Bowl. I'm like, I will work the rest of the night. I don't care. But I'm like, when, when Madonna performs, I need to be watching the television. And so I was. Do you think she'll, do you think she'll ever, do you think she'll ever perform at, say, the VMAs again? Uh, I don't know if they'd want her ever yeah. again. <clears throat> I mean, remember I, they, they gave her all those chances, I mean, quote, chances. You know, she showed up and then she she told that Aretha Franklin story and then she came out that oh one God. time and uh, sang a Prince tribute that everybody hated. And, you know, it's like, I mean, I'm yeah. looking at that as a fan and thinking like, well, she was asked to do something and she, she did what she thought was best, but you know, she's also maybe not thinking about the room, you know, she's not reading the room. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I think the less I see Madonna on an award show going forward, probably the better. I want to see her do like curated experiences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. She can control the outcome, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, she might, I could see her doing like, a guest appearance at the Super Bowl, you mm -hmm. know, like where she pops up, you know, if it was, if the moment was right, I think that'd be fun to, you know what she you know. needs to do. Uh, now that we're playing this game, she needs to uh, <laughs> jump into that sex in the city reboot and uh, play Samantha <gasps> because otherwise I'm not going to watch it. Abby, yes. Abby. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I loved hearing like they were theorizing, like who was going to like, should they recast Samantha in the sex in the city reboot? And yeah, I was totally thinking, I'm like, See, that's a project that where like it would have to be somebody bigger than life to mm -hmm. fit back into those Samantha Jones shoes. And I had seen somebody say they should re it should be somebody different every episode. So like every oh, yeah. episode, it's a different woman playing Samantha. And I was like, that's, that's actually be really, really funny. You know, like so if it wouldn't be Sharon Stone 
playing Samantha, who I thought Sharon Stone would be perfect to take or on Christine that role. Aguilera, who killed it she's, on Saturday. Night she's Live. too young to play that. Samantha's in her no, 60s did you now. See, did you see when she played Samantha on, on Saturday Night Live? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, was she did, iconic. She, it was iconic. Yeah, but yeah, I thought Madonna would be perfect as mm-hmm. like to. She hasn't done TV really since like Will and Grace. Yeah, and I uh, yeah. No, that's not true. Be, she was on that game show with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. N- not acting though. I mean, that's just her. Like, no, her she just her. showed up and talked for thirty minutes. Yeah. What do you think about them rebooting Sex in the City in general? I'm here for it. Do we? Um, is it, this is a care, care or don't care. Oh, um, I, I, I'm ecstatic. I'm trying to find a way to work ecstatic. on the show. I can't wait. I don't know. I, you know, I rewatched the series like a couple of years ago, and I just came to the conclusion that I hate Carrie Bradshaw. <gasps> Like oh, more than life, she's Tony. Oh, okay, yes. Wait, who, are, I, who, are, who are each of you? Who are each of your Sex in the City characters? I guess I turned into Miranda because I hate everything. <laughs> no, and Stefan, what are who are you? Well, I I used to think that I was a Carrie, but yeah, I sometimes I side with Miranda. I'm oh, I'm maybe like Carrie rising, Miranda waning. Yeah. I don't know, whatever, however you do those. Why? Who are you, Jess? Yeah, who are you? Jess? I'm a mix of Carrie and Miranda. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm probably a, I'm probably a Miranda. I'm a Miranda rising for sure. Like I present as Miranda, but I'm actually like really sensitive and like yeah. a romantic. Oh, see, I was going to say you were like Miranda and Samantha. <laughs> I am not Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not at all. Anyway, Ma- anyway. I would love to see Madonna <laughs> as Samantha, but I, 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 I doubt that's going to happen either just because <sighs> she's, she's got a movie to do. I know, but I would love to see Madonna have sex with FedEx, you know? <laughs> Madonna saying, if I worried about what every bit if I worried about what every bitch in New York was saying about me, I'd never leave the house. <laughs> That's a Madonna line, uh-huh. right? Yeah. <laughs> this guy has some funky tasting spunk. All right, we're done. <laughs> and, and, and just like that, we're done. Just like um, that. Yes. Jess, um, tell us about your next episode and who's on it and just tell ooh. us everything. Well, let's see. Who's on my ne- Well, I will say that we're about to record an episode, the three of us. Oh, yes. Gonna, yes. So you guys, your listeners, um, look for that in the next week or two. Um, aside from that, uh, I interviewed Rachel Dratch from SNL. Oh, yes. That was Margaret she's, Cho. She's great. Um, here, I'll give you a hint. It's not, it'll be out like in the next month. I interviewed Gina Gershon. What? <gasps> Get I out. just got chills. Oh my who god! Who definitely made me gay? I... Like the reason I am gay. So that is a real moment, and I need to edit it, and it will be out in the universe. Icons. I hope that you started with Bound and just went straight. Honey, to I, did every, I did every beat here. I'll give you a little tea. She's. I got her to talk about Showgirls, which she does not. I know. Dive I know. Into. We talk. Oh, we talked about everything, and she said that she was asked to do that showgirls documentary. Mm-hmm. You don't know me, yeah. and she turned it. She she said no to being interviewed for that because she said she has a book. At, like she's like, I really could write a book about mm. the experience, and she's like, I'm not giving my stories away. And I was like, Oh, like what? Is, you know, yeah. I tried to like. And she's like, I'm not giving you my stories either. She's like, I'm going to sell a book. I'm like, okay, yeah, make that money, girl. Even so, Jess, you got a mini exclusive with Gina Gershon coming later this there month, coming soon to coming wherever soon. podcasts are available. Hot yes, takes so and deep dives, baby. Hot, hot takes, deep dives. You can find Jess uh, there on anywhere you listen to podcasts, and she's also on. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, uh, J- Jess X NYC. Awesome. Three New Yorkers here, baby. Yeah, you know. Here it. we are. And hopefully, maybe soon, we can all get together and have drinks. <laughs> yeah. God, please let that vaccine come soon because I, I really need normal life to return. This, is, this has been the longest winter of my life. Mm. And like, wow. I'm like, every day the sun finally comes into my apartment. I just sit on the couch and pray that summer will be here before we know it you know what if we can get through this we can get through anything uh a wise woman once said it's all about survival 
Oh. <laughs> and on that note, um, Jess, thanks for joining us for a little This Week in Chaconi chat and I, Sex in the City chat. And, yeah, it was uh, fun talking to you. Um, everybody Please come enjoy, back. Enjoy this your... Week, this Week in Chaconi, my favorite segment on any podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone enjoy your Madonna-less Super Bowl halftime performance this weekend. Uh, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at MLVC Podcast and on the web at MLVCPodcast.com. And obviously we're streaming wherever you listen to podcasts. So feel free to share us with your friends, your fellow Madonna fans. And just remember, everybody, you're a superstar. Yes, that's what you are. You know it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>